So that's pretty much it. All right, I'm going to be doing my third part of my testimony, the vehicle testimony. This is the jersey that I was wearing in the one picture uh, where I'm riding on my 97 Yamaha Banshee, 1997 Yamaha Banshee, the black and red one, and I uh, still have this old jersey. Uh, I had this thing, bought it in 1993, okay? So I'm wearing a shirt here, a motocross jersey that's older than some of my viewers. So I think that's kind of funny. But yeah, 1993, this is old jersey. It has some paint spots on it down here where I was using it when I was doing some work, but still in pretty good shape for all that time. So uh, this study is going to be um, for those of you who are into vehicles, okay? Not motorsports, okay? We're not talking about armchair racing fans here. Uh, you're a fan of NASCAR and like to sit on the sofa drinking beer watching people driving fast. That's not who I'm talking to in this study. If you are a gearhead, okay? If you like motorcycles, ATVs, cars, trucks, be they classic or new or whatever else, uh, that's who this is talking about. This was a big part of my life. And uh, this is not going to be a deep theological study like a lot of my work that I do. Um, I'm a preacher, but uh, I want to talk today about uh, the place of vehicles, all different kinds of vehicles, as you saw in the intro. Um, I've had some really unique stuff over the years. I didn't put everything into the intro video. And I'm going to kind of go through when we tell them some stories about some experiences and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will be relating some things to scripture, but uh, this will be an interesting video. Again, if you're into vehicles, I think you'll you'll get a lot of what I'm going to be talking about. So, um, I'm going to show first and foremost. I talked about this in another thing here. My official. You know, a lot of people ask me if I if I have any education. Yes, I do actually. Let me show it to you here. I'll show this on camera, the overhead camera. International Correspondence Schools. And there we go. Zoom out here a little bit so you can see the whole thing. A word or two, Brian Denlinger, in recognition of the successful completion of the course of study in motorcycle repair. Okay. So, there you go. My two uh, degrees, if you will. A high school diploma and a correspondence course on motorcycle repair. So, uh, just had to put that in there. Uh, you know, and of course, you know, that's just correspondence. That's not anything real great or whatever else. But, you know, um, vehicle, uh, learning about vehicles and things like that is a kind of a hands on type of deal. So, I'm going to go over some things here, some pictures. It's kind of funny because it's like some of the vehicles I've had are kind of old school type vehicles, vintage type of stuff. And then I had some more modern things. And uh, I'm actually going to be doing something similar with this video here. And it's going to probably be pretty long, but if you know if you like vehicles, I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Um, but I'm actually going to be using some old stuff, old you know photographs shown with the overhead camera. And then I'll be getting later on into actual pictures taken with digital cameras and whatever else as technology changed in my life. I was born in 1975, so, um, but I, this is the third part of my testimony. Like I said, first part uh, was on my different jobs I've had. I've had some very, very unique jobs, lines of work and things over the years. And uh, the second one is how I came to know the Lord. I went from being a false church attending professing Christian to actually being born again as a Christian a Bible-believing Christian. And um, now this is the third part. Uh, what part did vehicles play in me coming to know the Lord? And uh, what part do vehicles play in my current life, too? Um, it's not that you have to give up vehicles or, or things like that. Neat vehicles after you get saved and you just got to live kind of a humdrum life of monasticism or something. No. Um, it's just your attitude towards those vehicles will change a little bit. And I'm going to explain that later on, show you what the Bible has to say about that. So if you've never heard it, you know, open your mind a little bit. might be interesting to you. So first motorcycle, first vehicle that I have any memories of, other than obviously vehicles my parents drove around. But uh, the very first motorcycle was my older brother. He had a MX-100 Yamaha. 
late seventies. I don't remember the exact year, but, um, he would take me for rides on this motorcycle. And then when I was 10 years old, um, he would start, he was starting to say, okay, now he, you know, had me get on the, the bike and, and he was trying to teach me. He'd ride on the back and kind of put his arms out around me, you know, and hold on to the handlebars. And he'd show me how to work the clutch and how to shift it correctly and everything. And, you know, and, uh, how to shift with my foot and everything in the brakes and the whole deal. So when I was 10, that's when I first started to ride. And so, you know, I'm going to be putting the pictures up and things of a lot of these bikes. If I don't have a photo of them, I'll put those, you know, the picture up. So first actual motorcycle that I ever rode was a Yamaha MX100, late 70s Yamaha MX100. The next one was this one here. Show this picture here with the camera, the red camera. And this is a... This is me when I was 13 years old, and uh, it was a Suzuki, I think TS100 or something like that, right there, a uh, two-stroke 100cc. I think it was about a, I think it was a actual like a 92cc. I think if I remember correctly, um, yeah, because you know if you don't understand about dirt bikes, a lot of times they'll say it's a 100, but it's actually a 92 or 94 or something like that. And the funny thing about it is, um, I actually have my chainsaw that this channel is named after right here's a picture of it uh, my chainsaw is actually a 394 xp it's a 94 cc two stroke so i actually have a chainsaw now that it has a bigger motor than my first dirt bike so <laughs> but uh, memories of that bike i remember um, i didn't quite understand a lot of mechanical things early on and uh, you know being a two stroke you had, of course you had the premix there and I think it actually had a little reservoir that you could put your, you know, two-stroke oil in. And then it would, like, mix it with the gas or something like this, which I never used it. I would just, you know, pre-mix, put it in with the gas, and, and then put the whole thing in, pour the whole thing in. And I remember the one time I went to the mountains, um, northern Pennsylvania. My friend had a cabin up there. And I took my little Suzuki 100 with me. And um, <clears throat> I remember we were, like, riding, and I ran out of gas, and he was like, what are you going to do? I was like, oh, I'll just use some of yours. <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Uh, didn't quite understand the very important reason for oil to be in there. You know, you don't have valves and things like that on a two stroke, you know, and uh, <clears throat> to, you know, keep oil there going in. And, you know, I'm, I'll apologize in advance because I've been out of really active motorcycle type of stuff for a very long time. I still love bikes and things and I'll talk more about that as we continue but if sorry if I get some of the details a little bit mixed up but anyways we were riding up there for like you know a couple hours and all of a sudden it was just like my bike got real hot and it just bleh, shut off and um, thankfully he had like a rope along or something he had a ATV a Honda four tracks 300 and he hooked up to me and pulled me back to the cabin but uh, it wasn't too long after that that my motor seized on the Suzuki so lesson learned Okay, don't run a two-stroke without, uh, you know, your premix in there, your oil. So uh, that was kind of a hard lesson to learn. <clears throat> After that, uh, my older brother and I wanted I wanted something bigger, you know, just have a 100 cc and all the guys in the neighborhood. We had a bunch of big hill climbs down in the woods, and and they were pretty good sized hill climbs. And my little Suzuki would just barely make it and sometimes wouldn't make it. And, you know, if you've been through that, you know, the joy of, you know, going up the hill and you're shifting down and all of a sudden you realize I'm not going to make it and you stop. Then you're like leaning up on your tank and, you know, and you're like kind of front brake going down. You're trying to do the, you know, the K turn or whatever that, you know, go back down. So I got a little sick and tired of that and I wanted a little bit more power, a little bit more speed especially for the hill climbs and my older brother the one that taught me how to ride the name is dean the two older brothers tom's the oldest dean's the second dean was the one that taught me how to ride and dean had a knew a guy that had a yamaha trials 250 bike i'll show pictures of this thing here um right there it is the old trials bike there's another picture of it and um a little seat you know the this was the predecessor of the more modern trials bikes uh, looks a little bit different but 
Again, a two-stroke 250 Yamaha. I think it was early 70s, about 1974, I think, if I remember correctly. But um, the thing, they called them mountain goats. You know, they, they it's one of the names that they would have, nickname for these bikes. And it pretty much lived up to that. I mean, the thing would climb just about anything. It wasn't the fastest bike out there. Um, yeah, 1974 Yamaha 250 Charles bike. I bought it for $250, sold for $300. So I made $50 on that bike but um i remember hill climbs were not a problem for that thing i mean first gear it just crawled i mean just i mean you could just crawl over anything with that thing and um but uh i remember the one time i had shorts on and it was summertime and i was riding it you know down in the woods across from where i grew up and there was a log that was kind of at an angle going across the trail and it just got done raining that morning and and so the log was nice and wet, no bark on it or anything, just kind of slimy and wet. And I went to go over it, and I hit it with the front tire, and it, it slipped like that, and I just went down, and my leg went in underneath the hot motor. And I still have the nice scar on the back of my uh, right calf muscle, where that motor laid, you know, the hot motor laid on top of my leg. And then things weren't exactly lightweight bikes, so it took me a little bit to get it off the thing. And that was the last time I wore shorts when riding. Not a real good idea anyhow when you're out riding in the woods and you got a lot of briar patches and things like that. But another time I rode it over to a friend's house a couple miles away. We had a huge network of trails in the area where I grew up down in Pennsylvania. And um, I remember I rode it over uh, and um, went to ride back, I guess, after a while. Just hung out, his, out at his house and stuff. And went to ride back and I don't know what happened to the thing but it, it overheated shut down I had oil in the gas I, I had that but uh thing shut down so I'm like pushing it you know and stuff pushing this bike and and got down into where the you know it cooled down started up took off again and uh got down in uh to where the hill climb was I might not have had enough you know oil in the gas and things but um still fairly new to the whole motorcycle thing and uh so i went to i was like i don't know if i want to make it up the hill and i started going up the hill and the thing died again it overheated and died again so i had to push it way out around where the big hills were out to this little side trail that went out way out around and i didn't end up getting home until after dark and my parents were worried about me but after i explained then they understood so uh while i had that um, if you could see this one picture here, I'll show you this again uh, of the Trials bike. There you see the Trials bike, and behind it is an old Honda 110 three wheeler. Here's a better picture of that one. Um, and what happened here was there were two of these things. Uh, my brother, older brother, knew a, a kid in high school, and he had one for parts, a Honda 110 for parts, a Honda 110 uh, that was running or at least he said it runs but he said it won't at the transmission shot on it so we went over and i, I forget um bought it for 200 dollars, sold it for 300 dollars. it's a 1980 honda 110 uh so um but anyways we went and got this thing and, they, and this guy is like you know he's kind of rich kid and uh we weren't rich but uh that's why i had a lot of old bikes all my buddies a lot of them had like you know newer RMs, you know, Suzuki RMs or Yamaha YZs or Honda CRs or Kawasaki KXs. This is 1980s, okay? So, you know, if you're thinking, what? You know, I've never heard of these bikes before. Well, look, in old, look at old vintage videos. That's my childhood. <laughs> but, so we went over and this, this kid was like, you know, oh, I got these two Honda 110s. The one doesn't run at all. It's totally shot. You can just use it for parts and the other one... Um, you know, it it starts, it runs, it sounds fine, but it doesn't go forward, back, or not backward, but doesn't go forward. Uh, There's no reverse on these things. So, you know, do you want them and stuff? My brother, I think he offered him like 50 bucks, and then later I paid him 200 for the thing. But uh, anyways, brought the things back home, and my brother was, you know, working on it as best as he could. And he looks down, and right about, so I can point to where it is. Right down underneath here, you have the pull start right there. And then I think it might have been that little black switch right there, if I remember correctly. But that little switch right there, uh, you could switch between kind of a, 
more for power or more for speed. There was like a little switch. And this switch was stuck right in the middle on neutral. So my brother went, switch, switched it to power or something like that. And the thing ran fine, ran perfect. So it's a good deal on that one. Had it for a while and then I ended up selling it. Uh, <clears throat> this one here, I had this in my album. This is a Honda 200 uh, three-wheeler. And uh, this was my brother-in-law's. And he paid uh, $50 for it. Um, it was underneath some guy's porch. My brother-in-law was always very, very good at uh, just wheeling and dealing with people. And we're driving down the road, and he goes, oh, man, it looked like an old three-wheeler underneath that guy's porch. And they were having, like, some family get-together, some Mennonites. And so my brother-in-law goes over, and he knocks on the door, and he's like, hey, you want to sell me your three-wheeler? <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, I, I, I don't know, I guess. And he's like, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. And the guy said, okay. So we, like, you know, loaded the thing up in the truck and took off. And, uh, you know, the old Honda air-cooled four-stroke motors, you know, the big red motors and things like that, the, you know, that, you know, the 300cc and smaller. And they were just so reliable and everything, if you have any experience with those. And uh, so, you know, new gas in the tank, new spark plug, change the oil, check the air filler oil, you know, replace it if it needs it. And usually that was it for the old Hondas. And uh, so he uh, got the thing running, ran great. Had to put some tires on it because the old tires were all dry rotted and everything, big cracks in the sidewalls. And, and uh, we took that thing out and had a lot of fun with it and and uh, beat it, you know, pretty good. You know, you just run it pretty hard and everything else. And those old Hondas could take it. And kind of a funny story on that one, the area, the one area where we had these big hill climbs, I remember, I'll be talking about this in a little bit here, My I had a 1987 Yamaha Banshee, first year for the Banshee, you know, and um, I tried to make it up this real big hill, it was kind of a weird, it was like the trail went side hill, and then it, you had to turn and shoot up the hill real fast, and it was really steep, and so, you know, I, I got my, you know, on my Banshee, and I was cruising down the trail, and I, I tried to get up this hill, and I got about maybe two-thirds of the way up the hill, and that was it. And I just didn't, I don't know if I didn't get enough speed or, or what the deal was, but so I'm there, you know, laying, you know, as far forward as I can to keep the thing from tipping over. So I'm laying there, you know, and I'm like, okay, starting to kind of back down. And I, I hear this, you know, and I look down and here comes my brother-in-law up on this, this very three-wheeler right here, you know, and uh, he's, he's putting up this hill, you know, coming up, he goes out around me passes me and um so i'm just like oh, brother that's embarrassing you know i <laughs> couldn't make it up on my banshee and um so i'm backing down backing down and i look down at the bottom of the hill and i see all my buddies are down there and they're down there going like this pointing up and yelling and going like this waving their arms to me so i'm going what are they doing and i look back up the hill again and it was a steep hill I look up the hill and here my brother-in-law did not make it and he bailed on the three-wheeler it flipped over and the thing's just end over end coming right towards me just boom 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 coming down so i just kind of slid off to the side like this the thing rolled up over top of me and not real bad didn't hit me real bad rolled up over the top of me and just boom 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 down and boom landed on its on its you know upright on its wheels and the stupid thing's just sitting there idling just perfect <laughs> Typical Honda Big Red, you know, you can just beat the things like crazy and, and they just run and run and run. So, next we have kind of a double picture here. Um, here we have my Honda Fat Cat. I don't, I think it was a, I'll look at the 87, 1987. I'll show you the picture next on that. 1987 Honda Fat Cat. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But this is my first street legal car. Okay, I actually had a Volkswagen, uh, 1970s Volkswagen uh, Beetle or Bug or whatever you called them things. Never got it on the road. I just rode it, drove it around the woods a little bit. I paid like $75 for it. But this is my first actual car when I was a teenager. When I turned 16, that's what I had. It's a Plymouth Champ. And a uh, weird little car. It was a four-speed you know, manual. 
at four speed and it had dual range transmission power and economy gears so it had your normal shifter here on the floor and it had beside it almost like a four-wheel drive lever you know on some trucks had power and economy weird you know and it would you put it in power and a little orange light would come on like a little yellowish orange light would come on, on the dash and put it down to economy and uh so you could actually shift it eight times if you wanted to you know which i did so <laughs> but that thing went through my years of of uh early teen you know driving and stuff like that and field hopping if you don't know what that is you there's a road and it kind of turns and there's and it goes like this you just kind of hop through the field, you know, and, and uh, that was always interesting. <laughs> Dumb things I did as a teenager, um, you know, driving real fast one night, and I went into a real sharp corner, did a complete 180 in that car, just, you know, drifted, I guess they call it nowadays, you know, and just slid around in that thing and almost hit, you know, broadside into a big tree with it. Another time I had it stuck in the snow, and I was trying to get my young sister to... Uh, she was three years younger than me, so she'd have been like 13. I was trying to get her to, to get in there and, you know, step on the gas, you know, let the clutch out slowly, step on the gas, and go as I'm back there pushing it. Well, she didn't get things right and stuff and panicked and basically stalled the car out. And I guess she put it the clutch in or something, and the thing started to roll backwards, and I was saying, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. And she's, you know, flipping out. The thing goes back and slams into a tree, and the bumper was like this weird, like it wasn't just bolted to the frame, it had like this little shock absorber thing, and it just totally popped it out on the one side. So, uh, for like a year I drove the car, I had a piece of clothesline wrapped around the bumper, and back in through the, the hatchback, and tied to the back seat, that's how I drove the thing. So, but just stupid stuff I used to do in these cars, and my first bike, I remember the, the little Suzuki 100, I got that thing up to 75 miles an hour the one time, just wee, and I just wound out, you know, and just things shaking, you know. I mean, you couldn't pay me to do that now. Crazy as a teenager. And that thing there, I'd get that thing going fast, you know. And, and I remember we're going down the highway the one time. We were going like 80 miles an hour in a little piece of junk car, and, and like we hit a bump, and like we heard a clang, 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 clang. And, my buddy looks at me and goes, what was that? And I'm like, I don't know. We're still moving, so let's just forget about it. <laughs> you know, it, crazy. Taking another friend home the one time, and um, I went to cross the intersection, and I shift from first, and I go down in the second, and, and I you know, go to take my hand off the gear shift, and it starts to fall down through the floor. And I'm like, whoa. I grab the, the gear shift, and I'm like holding it up, and here, I guess, the one of the U-bolts or whatever that held the the shaft you know underneath the vehicle the u-bolt rusted and fell out so i had to like drive the whole way holding the gear shift up shifting that way so fun times fun times so that was my first car and uh first street legal car excuse me but here's a picture of the honda fat cat 1987 there's the actual ad in the newspaper i kept that you can see six hundred dollars for this thing i saw one here locally not locally, but in the state of Maine. I just thought, I wonder what if there's any of these things around. I wonder what they go for. And uh, there's actually one for $2,500. So I know they're kind of collectible now. Uh, they're kind of a rare uh, vehicle. But there I was taking it apart, and I was cleaning everything else when I first got it. And uh, here's a picture of me with my nephew on the fat cat. See it there? Uh, I would have been 15, I guess, right around there. And uh, there's uh, another picture of the Fat Cat. There's a 200cc, you know, like the big red motor. It's uh, automatic. Um, it's uh, automatic clutch, I guess they called them. Uh, you guys still have to shift. It's not automatic, but it's you still have to shift. But there's these are just brakes, front and rear brakes here. There's no, you know, manual clutch. So here I am up in the uh, my friend's cabin. Going up a hill climb, there was an old quarry. It was a pretty steep little hill. Went up there and it kind of dropped off weird on the other side. And uh, so there I am going up there. And there I am coming off of a jump with it. Just caught me just as I was 
taking flight. <laughs> there was a pile of wood shavings, uh, like a, a tree crew had um, chipped up all these branches and stuff. And they had this huge big pile of wood shavings and I was climbing it with the big red. Another picture of it. A bunch of pictures of this thing. And there again, there's me jumping. And uh, it was a fun bike. It was, you know, not the highest horsepower or speed or anything else. But uh, I liked it. It was it was fun, you know. And, and uh, of course, I could ride manual clutch. But that thing was just kind of fun because it was kind of like half dirt bike, half, you know, big red three-wheeler. So kind of interesting. But I remember the one time... Um, there was a section that had like the little kind of almost like the whoops or whatever, you know. I don't know what they call them nowadays, but we call them back in my day and age. Show my age here a little bit. But uh, I remember going through that, and it was kind of like the, the suspension and the front tire weren't really working together too good because I was going a little bit too fast. And so the tire was kind of doing this, you know, because a big kind of an ATV tire on these on those Honda Fat Cats. And the suspension, you know, the, I guess the rebound and stuff like that, it was just not working together. And so the thing was kind of acting weird and it, it got a little bit to the side and it hit and just, and I went down. No, I guess it was this way. I went down this way. And I remember I, my head slammed into the, into the ground and I was like, I don't know how fast I was going, but I was going pretty good speed. And it like smashed my glasses up like this and kind of turned my helmet, full face helmet on, which you can see in the pictures there. Now I remember is my face just like scraping across the ground and I got a bunch of dirt in my mouth and stuff. So I took a lot of hits to the head air you know, over the years, which should explain a few things to some of my enemies out there. But after the Honda Fat Cat, I, don't, I didn't get a real good picture of this. Um, you can see there's the Fat Cat right there and beside it is a Husqvarna uh, 250, uh, mid-1980s one. Um, yeah, I don't have any writing on this. I didn't have it very long. There's a side view of the Husqvarna. Uh, had the kickstart on the left side, which is really weird. The uh, um, it was it was a fast bike, and I remember the the rear wheel had the the bearing was going out in it. <laughs> it was like it would just it would you know it wasn't it would shake a little bit and the uh, bike was it was beat bad. Uh, some rednecks had it and I bought it from them. And um, a fast bike, like I said, but I just, I couldn't stand the stupid thing. And I'd be riding it and the kick starter would fall off sometimes. And I'd... So I didn't have that very long. I ended up selling it pretty quickly. Uh, actually, to the guy, I sold the Fat Cat to a guy, the Honda Fat Cat to a guy. And then I ended up selling the Husqvarna to his son. So, um, but then I was kind of, uh, didn't have anything really, uh, just other than, you know, we always had like our family um, Sunday afternoons and things like that. Uh, we would go to you know, church building thing in the morning, and then Sunday afternoon after lunch, we would all go out riding our ATVs and dirt bikes and everything else. And and of course, we would trade, and you know, you know, I'll ride down to the trails, and then we'll swap, and then you ride my bike back, and I'll ride your four wheeler back or whatever. And so, I've ridden a lot of different things over the years, very unique uh, vehicles, but. Anyways, um, and so, uh, you know, I didn't have anything for a while, and I was looking for something, and I saw this ad in the newspaper, and I thought, I wonder what that is, and because, uh, again, I was looking to go up a little bit in size, because I was right around the, you know, 100cc is what I started out with, then I went up to 250, and then I was down to 200, and I was right in that range there. And so I saw a Yamaha Banshee 350. So I thought, I wonder what this is. And this is before, you know, I'll just go Google it or something. There was no such thing back in my day. And so I saw this very ad right here, Yamaha 350 Banshee four-wheeler. And I thought, oh, it's a four-wheeler. Fast, some extra, 1600 or best offer. So I went there. Right there is me on it and out riding it in the snow. And um, I went to a guy and that had it. I bought it. I think I offered him fifteen hundred, and he took it. There again, the thing could roost like crazy. Um, pretty much stock, except for it had uh, Tumi T5 pipes on it, which, if you know anything about Banshees, I think that they're the best out there. 
but I'd love to do, you know, to really kind of burn out with it and make these giant roosts with the thing. And it did a real good job with that. It was a real powerful four-wheeler. There again, me on it out in the field. Um, I lived back in the woods, kind of back this way. And uh, we would pull a, I'd put a, on the rear grab bar there, I'd put a rope back and we'd tie a big um, tractor trailer inner tube and then I'd pull people on the thing and get going real fast and it was a pretty wild time that you'd have there. There's me again. Uh, so, still have that coat too actually. But that's my 1987 Yamaha Banshee. You can see the Toomey pipes, little skinny pipes that the Toomeys were. And um, there's a final picture of that thing. Again. So, um, but kind of a funny story on that thing. Went and I got it, and I took it out for a little test drive and stuff. Oh, yeah, it runs pretty good. Brought it back, and I'm like riding it around. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty powerful, you know, seems pretty good. And, uh, but it was just, it just sounded like something wasn't quite right. And it just was kind of not running real, real good, real crisp, and real, you know, throttle response was a little bit kind of, bleh, you know, bleh, like that. And I thought, Huh, you know, and I'm like totally brand new to what a Banshee is. I didn't understand that you have to have the carburetor synchronized. You know, you have to have everything, the your, your jet needles going up and down at the same time. If they're off a little bit, well, it's not going to run real good. So I remember I rode it over to a buddy's house, and um, and we were like trying to figure it out. And I was like, you know, maybe, and he said, well, you know, it's got aftermarket exhaust on it. could be that they didn't jet it, you know, correctly. You know, your, your jets and your carburetors, if you don't know, uh, it's a little kind of a brass little screw that has a hole in it, and then your needle goes up and down, and then that lets in more gas or whatever else. Well, if you put, you know, better exhaust on, there's more exhaust going out, so you need more gas coming in and more air as well. And so I said, eh, I don't know, maybe, you know, and things, but he said, oh, I mean, you know, let's just try it here and stuff. So we, he cleaned it up for me, cleaned up the carburetors, and... Um, so he puts it back together, and I don't know if he must have kind of a little bit, kind of messed with it a little bit, that it got it a little bit more synchronized, but he gets on, and he goes down the road, and blah, 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 you know, and take it off, and all of a sudden the thing backfires, and it does the infamous banshee, you know, like they scream, and it, he just takes off down the road. And he comes back, and there's, you know, the, the if you ever ride fast without a helmet or goggles on, you know, you'll make your eyes water. And there's this, you know, water going back like this. And his eyes are huge. And he's like, oh, man. He's like, this thing's amazing. So we decided we ought to take it to the Yamaha dealership, which was b, &B Yamaha at the time. And um, so we take it in there like, oh, yeah, yeah you know, you've got to have the carburetor synced on this thing. So I was like, okay. So they sync the carburetors. I get it back. And wow, what a difference. Um so that was a that was a, a nice four-wheeler. I, I always loved that Banshee. Had a lot of good times on it, and uh, actually rode it to high school the one time. It was uh, snowy, and and so myself and a buddy had a Honda Four Trax 300, same one that I'd gone to the cabin, you know, with, and and uh, he had to tow me back with my little Suzuki 100. But he took his Four Trax 300. I had my Banshee, and then another guy had a Yamaha Warrior 350, and. Uh, the two other guys, it was their dad's four-wheelers. I was the only one that owned my own four-wheeler. So, uh, but we rode into high school, and I had you know my helmet and stuff, and I just put like a one, like a coverall type of suit on. I got in there, and you know took it off and things. And I had just my regular school clothes on, and so everything was cool. Nothing was said, you know. End of the school day, we ride, get on our four-wheelers and take off. And uh, it was about three days later, I think, we're there sitting in class, and all of a sudden this, um, the principal comes on the loudspeaker. Um, Will Brian Dellinger, Keith Ekman, and C.J. Donovan please report to the principal's office? And I remember, I think maybe one or two of us were in the same class and like looked over at each other like, uh-oh, <laughs> like, I know what this is about. So we get in there, and uh, thankfully I was a good friend of the son of the principal. Um, Mr. Ginger was the principal's name, and so we're in there, and uh, he's like, he's just kind of laughing. He's like, yeah, he's like, uh, you know, 
talked to the police about this whole thing, and they said, you know, if there's snow on the roads, technically you can ride and stuff. But he was like, you're not in trouble or anything, but he's like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> don't ever ride to high school again, okay? And we're just like, yes, sir, yes, sir, not a problem, sir. You know, because we thought we were going to be in real big trouble. So thankfully, thankfully we weren't. So there's a, um, a place down in Treverton, PA called Tower City. If you're from Pennsylvania, I'm sure you've heard of Tower City. Uh, big, huge um, quarry, real big coal piles and stuff like this, and big rock piles and everything else. Huge, big trail, trail climbs, hill climbs and things. And um, I took my banshee there. And what happened is in the back, the axle carrier on a banshee is kind of like that. You know, like if this is the swing arm, it kind of comes down and has you know, like this. And then it holds on you know, the axle, the rear axle and the disc brake and, and things, and then the sprocket on the other side. And so one of those bolts came out when I was riding at Tower City and I didn't realize that. And it, I think it like, I think it twisted or something. Somehow the, the rear axle kind of came out of the carrier. Somehow it, it might've even been two bolts, but whatever. The whole point is the disc brake went over into the caliber and cut into the caliber. I mean, it was, it was pretty bad and I was done riding for the day at that point so I had this thing to deal with I didn't have a whole lot of money back then because uh, I was in debt with actually a pickup truck which I'll show in a little bit and uh, so I was like oh, man what am I going to do and uh, so there was a kid in high school and he said he had a Honda 250X and uh, I thought well it'd be kind of cool to try a four stroke for a little while and he said you know come check out my 250X I'll trade that for your banshee so um because his was supposedly running good and everything else and uh, so i went there and um to his place and i said yeah i'll trade you so here's a picture of me on that honda 250x and uh rear tires were like almost smooth on the thing and uh he gave me a new set of tires that went along with it but uh had this aftermarket exhaust on it it was so loud it was ridiculous I didn't really even like it and there's another picture of it he had the you know he cut the front fenders and things on it it was all right but uh not like the banshee there's another picture of it from behind the house where i grew up and there i am jumping not a real good picture but and uh so the thing it was not the greatest four-wheeler and I took it into a Honda shop up in Ephrata and I said you know it's not running real good it's kind of this it's that whatever else you know check it out and the guy checked it out for me and he's like oh man he's like this thing's junk man he's like look here the frame's cracked this is bad that's bad he's like it's going to cost you a lot of money to fix it up to have it right and I was like yeah I said I'm just going to sell it as is okay so I got rid of it and uh didn't have anything for a little while and it was right around my senior year in high school when I was that was actually my senior year uh, when I had the Banshee and then when I traded and at that time I had a uh, I had had my little Plymouth Champ for a number of years and I got rid of that and um, I wanted to get a truck and there was a, uh, again my older brother I'm realizing how much he talked me into getting these different vehicles <laughs> but he had a friend that had a really neat looking uh, Ford Ranger, 1987 Ford Ranger. So, I'll show you pictures of that. Right there it is, kind of a dark picture. It was a Ford Ranger STX model. It had a three inch Rancho suspension lift. It had the Tanu cover on the back as extended cab, 2.9 <clears throat> liter V6. There's another picture of it, me in it. And a really neat looking truck. It was dark blue with a uh, silver stripe on the side, you know, 31 inch by 10 and a half inch uh, tires on it. There it is in the snow. So, um, there's another picture of it. A little bit of a lift kit on it. Had the push bar in the front. There again. There's another photo of it. And, there you know these are old pictures when it's a Polaroid picture but uh, 
that one there and um, there it is when it was for sale you can kind of see the the blue collar there the dark blue like a shiny metallic dark blue it was a really nice truck and um, <clears throat> two stories from that thing uh, I was pretty much an adrenaline junkie in, in those years so I remember the one time going to my friend's house and there was these Strasburg Railroad train tracks Cherry Hill Road and uh, there was the it was a hill that kind of came down like this and then it kind of leveled off hit the train tracks and then went down again and so either way you're going to be getting air if you're getting any kind of speed at all so I'm cruising along in my truck and I get the thing up pretty good speed and I just launched going up the hill just whoo, boom hit you know and I was I hit, hit kind of weird and I thought uh-oh you know get to my buddy's house and the you know the big you know spring in the front the big like coil spring actually had come off and was on just like only on like just halfway I was like Ew. so we we managed to get it back to the way it should be but uh you know I took pretty good care of the truck it, it wasn't like I just totally beat the thing or anything else but I was like you know cool in high school then because I had this cool truck and uh I was in debt I was I began my life of in debt for you know being in debt for vehicles and um uh it went a little bit after high school I guess and uh the thing started acting up kind of weird and whatever and uh I realized that the, I took it to a garage or whatever and they said you know your main bearings going out and that's kind of a famous thing for these 2.9 liter V6s right around the I think it was 120,000 130,000 mile you know range and uh so I actually had a brand new crate motor motor put in it and then one buddy was like oh you shouldn't have done that you know we could have put a V8 in it and stuff but I was I started to get into this phase of just buying and selling vehicles just buying and selling buying and selling and it got worse you know as time went by um, didn't quite understand why at the time but looking back now as a saved man I understand why talking about that in a little bit but uh, so I, I had that thing and um, I was out of high school at that point in time I graduated with that truck and I remember I was I had a job I was building boats and um, I drive that truck to, to my work and everything and and uh, I thought you know I'd like to save some money here and and uh, so I thought I want to get a street bike just gonna get a good street bike I had had a uh, I don't have any pictures of the thing but a buddy of mine same one that had the Honda 300 four tracks um, Keith Ekman was his name his dad had an old late 70s uh, GS 425 Suzuki and uh, it had been sitting like in a shed for a while and so we went we got the thing started and I was following him and you know he was he was riding the motorcycle because we were going to put it in the back of my pickup truck and it was like my pickup truck's like high off the ground and everything and he's like I really don't want to try to ride it up there it's pretty heavy and I don't want to try to push it up because that probably, probably would be even worse he's like I'm just gonna ride it I'm like okay I'll follow you so we're cruising along, and I remember we get to this traffic light, and the thing, it was not running all that great. I mean, the carburetors needed to be cleaned. It was just not running too good. So we get to this light, and the light goes green, and he goes to pull out, and bleh, the bike just dies. So he's there, like, trying to start the thing, and things. we just jump-started it, you know, and it wouldn't start. So he gets to kick start, and he's, like, kick-starting this thing. He's right in the middle of the intersection, right in the middle of this big traffic light. So light you know goes yellow red and nobody can go and so you know light changes again he's there still trying to kick the thing gets it started and bleh, you know, it just keeps dying out so people started getting mad and they were starting to blow their horns and so i thought i'll just get in on the action so i'm there blowing my horn you know and he's just like looking back at me like what are you doing so, just having fun you know so we finally gets the thing going and we limp it to his house and he got it fixed up and ran great then and uh so he had it for a while ended up wrecking it in a corner i bought it off of him and uh what but wasn't hurt that bad or anything but uh, i bought it off of him and did what little work it needed and then i was riding it around and uh sold it after not too long and but i thought you know okay I'm, I'm out of high school I got this job building boats I want to have a motorcycle that I can ride 
to and from work where I can, you know, save some money on gas and whatever else and something, you know, a little bit more fun going to work on a motorcycle than, you know, driving a truck. And so um, I went out to B&B Yamaha and I went in and I was like, hey, I'm looking for a street bike. And they were like, oh, okay, that's cool. And they're like, uh, we got something though you might be more interested in. I was like, well, yeah, I don't know, but I'm just looking for a street bike. And the guy's like, just come on out. I want you to see it. So I walk out, and I'm like, oh, can I test ride it? And he's just grinning, and he's like, yeah, you can test ride it. And he's like, if you do, you're going to buy it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just want to you know, ride it, see what it's like. I bought it. Here's a picture of it. There's my truck, and there's my Suzuki Quad Racer 500. They called them, nicknamed them Quadzillas back in those days. So it was a 1990, I think. Again, the truck, my Quad Racer 500. Better picture of it right there. Put uh, these tires on the back. You know, you had the no fear here and the no fear there. I don't know. People from that era might remember that. The no fear thing. And I didn't have too many back in those years. There's another picture of it. And again, another photo of the thing. So um, that was, uh, you know, like I said, I rode it around the parking lot, and I was like, this thing's really cool. So I forgot about the street bike, you know, and came back with my impulsive buy of now I got a four-wheeler. So, uh, but I always wanted a one of these quad racer 500s, and I, you know, they were kind of hard to find, and they're probably even more hard to find today in decent shape. So. I got the Quad Racer 500 and, uh, you know, really had fun on that thing. Took it to Tower City one time and ended up um, riding it at a buddy's house the one time. We were riding up this power line and um, he's in front of me at an RM250 Suzuki. And he, you know, roosted a little bit, kicked some rocks back at me. And it, it had the, the uh, I'll show you here, the hand guards on it, which I was thankful for that. But right down, I'll show you on the picture. Here's the hand guards, but right down in here, there was a little uh, place where the liquid cool, you know, the, the pipe went in there, the radiator type of hose, I guess you could call it, went in there um, into the side of the motor, and a rock went right back through there and smacked that thing and just shattered it. And so I'm like, great, you know. And uh, so it's broken, antifreeze just spraying all over the place. So I'm like, well, that's not too good. They're just ruining my day. So I limped it back to the truck, put it back in, and uh, went home. And I remember we were going to go to Tower City, and I went into the Suzuki dealership down in New Holland and uh, went in there and uh, said, you know, I need this part and everything else, and I'm going to be going to Tower City in two weeks. Can you have it by then? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, we'll have it then just come back in next Friday or something, you know. So I come back in Friday, going to be leaving like the next day or something for Tower City. And I said, you know, hey, I'm here for the part. Oh, man, I forgot to order it. <laughs> it's like, you got to be kidding me. So didn't get to go on the trip, but then we went later. I think it was how it was. And the kickstart fell off of the thing. And so I had to like put it in my pocket. And any time I'd want to stop, I'd get the kickstarter out stick it on you know the, you know these type, type of adventures if you're you know into dirt bikes or atvs or whatever else yeah this kind of thing so show you a picture here of the shed at the at my parents property where i was raised and there's my brother-in-law had gotten a good deal on a bunch of bags of old insulation so he just stuffed them in there on top of my quad racer 500 and this is uh you know we would have these doors shut and locked and he was selling a truck or something to some kind of some uh, white trash type of guys, some rednecks. And, and uh, he was, they got to talk about four-wheelers. And he's like, oh, i got to show you my brother-in-law's four-wheeler. Big mistake. He showed him this, my Quad Racer 500. And I go to leave for work um, a couple days later. And I come out, go to get in my truck. And I, I get in the truck and I look forward. And there's the doors to the shed open and my four-wheeler is gone. And so I'm like, oh, great. So I'll go back in, called my boss, said, hey, somebody stole my four-wheeler. I'm going to be in a little bit later. And, uh, you know, yeah, okay. So the police come out and stuff, and we filled out the report. You know, he filled out a report, and 
we told them, you know, here's the names of the guys that did it, and uh, they never did catch them. They, I guess, went and questioned them, and, oh, no, we didn't do anything and stuff. And uh, years and years later, they actually found the frame, uh, just the frame for the four-wheeler. So real nice. So they, they obviously scrapped it. They took the motor, and they sold that, and they sold whatever else off. A um, little bit upsetting. So that's the story of my Quad Racer 500. Uh, but I had some good times on it. But I'll show you a picture here of one of the boats. These are the kind of boats that I used to build. Big pontoon shuttle bus type of things down to Baltimore, Inner Harbor. We, we, I mean, we built everything. We had a guy that would build the pontoons back in the back part of the shop. Um, I mean, we built everything. It was all aluminum. We'd hang the motors, you know, we'd test them, get them all running good and everything else. The, the bilge pump and the, all the different stuff, you know, everything. And um, here's the interior of one of these boats designed uh, to haul a lot of people around the inner harbor. We'd hook up the, these were all hydraulic. The steering was all hydraulic. We'd have to hook all that stuff up, bleed the hydraulic lines and everything else. And there's your throttles, the two different motors. And uh, I mean, we did everything. Wiring, put all the windows in, start to finish. And it was a three man crew for most of the time that I was there. There was a kind of a wet bar in the back that we would build. There's the head, also known as the bathroom. So that's the kind of boats that I would build. And um, <clears throat> so I built those until 1998, I think it was. Graduated in 1994, worked for the summer at Strasburg Railroad. It's in my working testimony. And then from there, went and built boats for a little while, a little bit of time, and then I had my appendix burst because of how toxic the place was. And um, I was laid off for a little while, back to work there again, and uh, I me mean, talking about some of the stuff I had, vehicles I had, because I was making, you know, okay money there, and I was, you know, going out and buying vehicles, just one after another, just going from this one to that one to this one to that one, looking for something, looking for happiness. Here's another one that I bought in my time working there at the boat place. I found this old thing. 1971 Ford F-150. It uh, had a 360 big block in it. Back in those years, that was a big block, the 360, the 390. V8 three-speed. It was a three-speed on the tree. The guy converted it to be on the floor. Talk more about that in just a minute. Um, but there's another picture of it. It's an old truck. The infamous uh, gas tank behind the seat. You know, it wasn't a real great truck, but I was actually uh, the one guy that worked at the Built and Boats with me. Um, he had a old Ford van, and um, it had a 460 big block in it. And we were gonna, I was, I've actually bought the motor from him, and I was gonna put that 460 into this truck, and uh, you know, then I was gonna have you know hot rod it and whatever else, because the 360 that was in it. Like I said, a lot of the old trucks, they had the three speed on the column, the steering column, called it three on the tree. And he had converted it to be down on the floor. Well, he didn't have the linkage right or something, and it was just like impossible to shift between the different gears. It was really miserable. And um, so I had that thing for a little bit of time and just I lost my motivation to, to restore the thing and make it nice and whatever else. I just got rid of it. Um... <clears throat> and then around that same same time I had multiple vehicles during this time so don't geek don't think how do you you know are you kind of getting things mixed up here with you know all these different vehicles well you know it wasn't one and then another and then another it was a lot of these were overlapping so around that time I kind of missed having a um, Honda Fat Cat so I bought another Honda Fat Cat uh, right there is me with my nephew on it and um, another guy there, a uh, high school friend I knew, had a Yamaha Warrior. There's my brother-in-law with his Honda three-wheeler, which I showed earlier, the 200. There's a friend of his that had a Kawasaki Mojave. And this is a Kawasaki uh, Takati three, I think, is what they call them things. If I remember correctly, I think it was the plastics were painted because I think the Takatis were actually uh, green, but it was painted. It was a two-stroke three-wheeler, uh, three 250cc. 
but we just you know we were out riding that one day and took a picture there like that but that was my second um, Honda Fat Cat so another picture of it there there's me and my nephew on that thing here's inside the shed you can see here with the, from the work uh, testimony if you hear that one where I started going from the boat place to work in woodworking with a wood lathe specifically but there is my um, Honda Fat Cat and right here this was a Honda 200M three-wheeler that I had bought around that same time and I was just doing some work on it and things so um, but the second Honda Fat Cat it was a guy not too far from where I lived down there in Peach Lane in Lancaster County and he was a couple miles away an older guy had that fat cat and I just my dad met him because my dad worked at a hardware store at the time and he was like yeah hey, I got this old fat cat you know I'm thinking of getting rid of it and my dad said oh yeah maybe my son's interested so I said yeah I'll take another one so I had that one and just had it for a little while and ended up selling it but uh, around that time period my brother-in-law actually had a uh, Kawasaki GPZ 750 I'll show pictures of that okay there we go right there's the GPZ 750 not looking too good because of what happened and there's another picture of it from behind I actually bought it off of him after he wrecked it and uh, what happened well um, he was coming home from work the one day and an Amish buggy basically turned in front of him and he hit the horse broadside and ended up killing the horse and nearly got killed himself so um, but I rode the bike numerous times. It was a really nice bike, real, ran real smooth. And so I, he was like, yeah, it's totaled, and the insurance company's just like, scrap it. And I said, well, I'll buy it off of you, you know. And so I didn't pay a whole lot for it, and I was going to fix it. And had too many other projects, so I just got rid of it. But uh, it's a shame because it was a real nice bike, real nice smooth bike to ride. Here's a better picture of my, uh, you know, Honda 200M. And uh, kind of a little funny joke there, pro taper bars. Uh, I don't think so. But that was a that was a good little three wheeler. I took my you know nephew for a lot of rides. He really liked doing that back in those years. So you see a lot of him in the pictures. There it is again. Um, another picture of it there. I like to go down through creeks and things with it. It was a lot of fun. It was a good little three wheeler, very reliable. And then uh, this was a, one that my brother-in-law had. I think it was a 250SX or something like that. Um, all the motorcycle parts all over the place. <laughs> Quite the rednecks. But there's mine, Honda, and then his, Honda 250, beside it. Um, there we are down, at the, down in the woods across the road from where I grew up. There was a creek that you could ride through. Here's a picture of me going down through the creek. We'd love to you know, see how deep of water we could go through with the thing. And uh, just real good, reliable. Going up a little bit of a hill there. Should have been leaning forward a little bit more, but um, just kind of messing around. Creek banks and stuff, you know. Um, there's my Honda and my brother-in-law's. Uh, I don't have it on the back there. I think that thing was a... Um, Mako, I think. I don't know if I have any pictures of it, but uh, again, you know, I had that thing for a little while and then ended up selling it. There's a picture of me on my Honda 200M. It was my youngest sister's boyfriend at the time. There's my brother-in-law on his old bike. Don't remember what it was. I think it was a Kawasaki, an older Kawasaki. That was his truck back there, 1970s Ford or uh, Chevy, yeah, Ford. Chevy, um, might have been a 72 I think, there was my, my dad actually had this old step van back there, so had quite the weird uh, vehicles, but this guy here was really, really, uh, really good with mechanical type of things, and he actually had, sitting on his uh, bedroom dresser, he had this bike right here, a Jackson EX. Okay, and uh, this was 1995, so that was a year after I graduated high school, but had this little motorcycle right here, and the thing ran, it was a little two-stroke, 
and uh, ran and everything just you know one gear or anything a little pocket bike and um, there's my older brother the one that taught me how to ride that's Dean riding the Jackson EX riding up the road laughing like an idiot you know we were all laughing and everything with this bike and uh, a little story on that thing I get on it you know it's my turn to ride and I'm like riding it and I was I'm about a almost a foot taller than my older brother and uh so well I shouldn't say a foot taller about probably about six inches or so taller six seven inches taller than my brother so um, my older brother and so it's like my turn to ride so I'm on this thing and my knees are like way up you know and I'm cruising down the road on this little thing and about then I hear this noise come behind me and I'm like oh no this is gonna be embarrassing guy on this Harley comes up behind me Harley Davidson motorcycle he rides up beside me, and I and I, I like look up at him, you know, me, you know, looking up at him and stuff, and he's just like dying laughing. <laughs> so I'm sure that was funny looking for him, you know, this this tall, lanky, young guy on this little tiny motorcycle cruising down the road, you know. So it was it was fun. It was it was a little you know, it was a blast riding that little thing. But uh, yeah, here's a picture of the. Uh, bike that my brother-in-law had there's my honda 200m and there's this old thing it is a, a 1976 mako 250 um, the rear shocks are upside down inverted shocks in the back the exhaust pipe runs through the air box and uh kickstarter's on the left side carburetor doesn't have a choke it had a prime bulb so kind of a unique bike and uh yeah, you can see again there that the, uh, you know, the sprocket's on the right side instead of the left side. So, definitely an odd motorcycle. Had a weird gas tank on it and everything. So, it's kind of funny. But at that point in time, too, um, you know, it was like all these machines coming into my life. I was just going crazy with buying stuff. We had, it was just like a motorcycle dealership there almost. And uh, my brother-in-law... Whitney is his name, I'm married to my older sister, and um, he, well, with a Honda three-wheeler and stuff, and then that was in the Kawasaki thing there, little Kawasaki motorcycle. At that point in time, he was working at a big woodworking place in New Holland, and uh, one of the guys he worked with, one of his co-workers, said that he had this old street bike, and uh, my brother-in-law said, hey, you know, maybe I'd be interested in it, or, or my you know, younger brother-in-law, he might be interested in it. And uh, so we went to look at it, and here's a picture of it. I was fixing it up because it had been sitting for a very, very long time. It's an old Suzuki GT750. Okay, I don't know if you might not be familiar with that, but I'll tell you a little bit about it here in just a couple minutes. But uh, the interesting thing about this is it is a three-cylinder. Okay, you can see that I had the just I put some rags in the boots going there into the head of the motor just to keep any kind of dirt out or anything else. I, I think it had been sitting for like 15 years or something crazy. I mean, the the gas in the tank was just terrible. It was just like brown gel, brown molasses almost, and it smelled like varnish. It was awful. Um, you know, just everything needed to be going over in the bike. And so uh, three-cylinder two-stroke, 750cc is what the thing is. They were water-cooled, so they called them water buffaloes. And uh, that's what that bike was. Here's another picture of it. There I have the gas tank off of it right there. And uh, I had to totally redo the gas tank on the inside. I put this uh, rust, like a chemical in there to get rid of the rust. And then you have to do all this different stages. And then you put a coating inside with another chemical uh, to kind of restore the gas tank. So the gas tank was good. But we ended up getting the thing running. And uh, it was definitely a unique bike. Very unique. Um, another picture of it there so another picture of it after we had it all back together and running two pipes on the right side one on the left side so like I said a very interesting bike very heavy um, there's your oil reservoir thing there that would you know mix with the gas and things and uh, heavy bike but it, it's it sounded literally weird it was like it sounded almost like an outboard motor like a bigger outboard motor on a boat because it's two stroke but it's like a big two stroke definitely a unique bike is you know and fairly you know 
I wouldn't call it real fast, but it was it was interesting. And another project that I had here. Here you go. You can see our motorcycle dealership, essentially, and Honda three wheelers there. There's the GT750, the Water Buffalo. And back here I had a very interesting project. It was a late 1970s uh, Kawasaki KZ1000, and there's a Yamaha Banshee frame. You say, you weren't planning to do that, were you? Yes, I was, actually. My KZ1000, my brother-in-law's Mako 250, and then he had, I think it was either an old Honda, or I don't remember what this was, but it was like a 1960s bike. You might know that if you're really a fan of those older bikes like that. Um, again, another picture of the GT750. I had the emblems off at the tank at the time. I later put those on, but there's that. There's the KZ and the Banshee frame. Here's a, another image of that. We This was a barn find. Uh, the guy didn't have the title or anything else. He just It was an old bike. He'd wrecked it. You can see the signals off there. And it ran good. We rode it around and everything on the back roads. It was really strong running. At this, you know, the gauge up here was all duct taped together and everything. You can kind of see that. But the thing ran excellent. But he didn't have a title or anything else for it. So he said, you know, we just bought it basically for the motor. And my plan was I found a 1989, I think this was. It had the red plastics with the gray trim, the gray tank shroud and the gray seat and then the red plastics front and rear. I think it was a 1989. And I was gonna put this motor, the KZ1000 motor, into that Banshee frame. It was a complete Banshee I bought off a guy and everything was there. He just took it apart and he was too lazy to put it back together again. So I was going to put the KZ1000 motor into that frame. There's a side picture of it. I was kind of envisioning, you know, I, what I, my, my plan was is I was going to cut the frame in here and up, you know, in here, and I was actually going to mount, you know, cut this here and here and here and here, and I was going to mount this frame with the motor in it like that, and then I was like, yeah, but I'm going to have to redo the swing arm and all kinds of interesting stuff, but I was actually had this motor at uh, where I was building boats for a while, and I, was, I had this frame as well, and we were going to work at putting that in there, and... Uh, Never got around to it. Ended up leaving that job before I could get that done. Again, motorcycle frame. Another picture of it. There I'm stripping the bike down. And there we're down to frame and frame. KZ1000 and Banshee frame. There's a car I had too there. I'll get back to that in a couple minutes. And there we go. Again, another picture. And uh, so that was my plan on that whole thing. And I, like I said, I never got around to doing it. Um, and just, you know, I had so many different projects back then. It was crazy. All these different motorcycles and ATVs and everything else.